Welcome to another video on trading with Python. Today we will look at Jupyter Notebook and market data. What you will learn is you will learn how to set up the Jupyter Notebook environment, extract trail symbols from Metro 5, and request market data such as tick data or OHLC data. First, what is Jupyter Notebook? Jupyter Notebook is a web-based coding environment. It is very popular among data scientists and machine learning specialists, and it is also general for data visualization. Advantages of Jupyter Notebooks are, as already mentioned, data analysis, visualization, strategy development, and backtesting. But if you want to deploy your training strategies, I would recommend deploying them in Matrix 5 environment, where you can also manage your risk and monitor your trades. Assuming that you have Python installed already, you can install Jupyter Notebook using pip in our command prompt. Let's type pip install picture lab after the installation of Jupyter lab is ready let's create a directory called training with python to do that in windows we type make directory trading with python now our directory has been created and to move the directory let's move using cd Trading with Python. Now we move to this directory, and what we can do now is run our Jupyter server. And to do that, we type the command Jupyter Notebook. After that, your Jupyter server should be running, and you will be redirected to this home page. Here, we can create a new Python file. Python 3 and here this is our Jupyter Notebook where we can start coding. Let's import MetaTrader 5 as MT5. To do that we type import MetaTrader 5 as MT5. First to connect our platform we need to use mt.initialize so mt5.initialize now we run this using run and now we see that we are connected to this current MT5 platform that is running so we can interact with this login 5069010 that is my current MT5 platform. To get the list of symbols we can type symbols is equal to MT5.symbols get and if we display the symbols, we now have data for all the trader symbols inside the Metro 5 platform. There's a lot of data, I know, but to simplify that, we can also create a loop, like for example, for symbol in symbols, print, symbol and now we choose the attribute name so it will simply print out the symbol name and here we, here we have the list of symbols like EURUSD, GBPUSD and we see that IC Markets has a lot of symbols to choose from. Now that we know what symbols we can trade let's try to request price data from a symbol and to do this I will need the library's time and date time. We can request price data using mt5.symbolinfotick. So let's create a variable price and we now want to request price data using symbol info tick. And the parameter that we have to pass is the name of the symbol. It is any symbol that you can choose from the symbol list. And in this case, I will use Euro USD. Let's print the price and see what we get. Now we press run. And what we see is we get the time in Unix timestamp format. We get the bid, we get the ask price, and also some volume data. For this purpose, I will only need the time, bid, and ask. So to get these individual values, I can now simply select the attribute price.time. 
I can then also specify price dot bid and then I can get price dot ask. Let me add a string to this so we know exactly what line represents what. So this is the time row. This is the bid row. And this is the ask row. So let's run this again. And here we have time bid and ask. What if we want to have the date time object instead of a Unix timestamp? To do this, we can use the date time library. And here we use date time dot from timestamp. And this timestamp function will convert the Unix timestamp to a date time format. So let's run this again. And here we see that here we have the date time format in UTC. Lastly, um, what we can also do is we want to know the price data updating all the time. So we can put this into a while loop. So while true. And we can request periodically to have the real time data all the time. And of course, uh, I don't want to run this uh, as fast as possible. In this case, we can use the time module to create an interval where I want to request, let's say, every 200 milliseconds. So this is 0 0.2 seconds. So time dot sleep. And that way, we will request the price data every 200 milliseconds. Let's run this. And also before we run this, actually, let's also add an empty print statement so we can see the new values separated. Here we see that we have bid and ask prices updated real time in a while loop. This is it for this video. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it and I will be back with another video. Bye.